Tonight, the devastating impacts from severe weather on the East Coast now blamed for at least one death. A pair of tornadoes just confirmed in the Southeast. Nationwide, thousands without power, trees toppled, and flash floods. Coming down. Pretty heavy. Winds are gusting. Even an avalanche warning. The region still under threat. And the good news for the week ahead. Americans evacuated from Haiti, the country spiraling out of control from gang violence. As Haiti's prime minister struggles to hold on to power, the unrest on the ground as the race to get those Americans to safety. President Biden's all-out push for the general election, what his top allies are doing now, plus how soon former President Trump could clinch the Republican nomination. The president's harshest words yet for Israel's prime minister. He's hurting Israel more than helping Israel. The latest U.S. steps to get critical humanitarian aid to Gaza. NBC News exclusive, the U.S. military's new battlefront with Russia. Anywhere we go, I know we can fight. Our team is in the Arctic as Marines train on the frozen tundra. New questions late tonight about Princess Kate after news agencies pulled a newly released photo of her over concerns that may have been manipulated. What we know so far. Good evening, I'm Peter Alexander. It's a little more than a week until spring, but tonight you wouldn't know it across much of the country. Parts of eight states face winter storm alerts tonight as a punishing system is set to unload more snow and strong winds across New England and into the Great Lakes. Already tonight, we're learning about one death in New Hampshire. And across the southeast, the cleanup is now underway. Late tonight, meteorologists there confirmed a pair of tornadoes slammed into communities in Alabama and Georgia this weekend. Elsewhere, heavy down pours are to blame for extreme flooding, with Charleston seeing more than double its record of rain in a single day. We begin tonight with NBC's George Solis on the dangerous conditions. Tonight, extreme weather turning deadly as millions clean up from a severe storm that slammed the East Coast. A 20-year-old skier died in icy conditions on New Hampshire's Mount Washington. Two others were injured, authorities said late today, according to the Associated Press. Meanwhile, two hours away, homes were submerged on New Hampshire's coast. These images recorded by Henry Swenson. If you could describe in one word some of the images that we're seeing, what word would that be? Oh, uh, heartbreaking. And down south, Charleston, South Carolina, also hit particularly hard by the deluge. Uh, it's locked up. It's not. Is it even neutral? Some drivers were left stranded and relied on help from others to move waterlogged cars. You need a hand, man? The flooding so bad in some spots. Firefighters were called out to escort people out of homes and businesses. Up the 95 corridor in Toms River, New Jersey, the downpours just as dramatic. Pretty heavy. Winds are gusting. Wow. What a night. In Queens, New York. This backseat passenger, at times looking like he was braving rough seas instead of city streets. That's crazy. The severe weather didn't just stop there. In Echo, Alabama and southeast Georgia, the National Weather Service saying tonight tornadoes were responsible for sections of homes being ripped to shreds and trees toppling. The storm system responsible for the damage is not done yet. Tonight, more than 60 million from Georgia to Maine are under wind alerts. The gusts could reach up to 60 miles per hour leaving many bracing for potential power outages and difficult travel before the extreme weather clears out. And George, George joins us now. George, everybody's looking forward to spring. So how soon before things are expected to warm up? Yeah, that's right, Peter. A lot of us expecting that warm up. And the good news is that the East Coast is expecting to see a significant warm up into next week. The region, some areas here could see above average temperatures by as much as 20 degrees by Wednesday. Peter. George Solis in Lower Manhattan tonight. George, thank you. To Haiti now, where an urgent evacuation effort is underway. The U.S. military is racing to rescue non-essential personnel from the U.S. Embassy there. The mission comes as that country is spiraling out of control amid a renewed surge of gang violence, and its prime minister faces growing pressure to resign. Marissa Parra has the very latest. Tonight, an evacuation amid a country in chaos. A U.S. military operation airlifting non-essential embassy employees out of Haiti. A move approved by President Biden, who a U.S. official says remains deeply concerned. 
The administration also boosting embassy security. U.S. Southern Command saying no Haitians were on board that flight. Last week, the White House emphasizing the urgency of the crisis. We think about food, health care, clean water, and other forms of critical assistance through U.N. and uh, NGO partners to help people in need. A state of emergency in Haiti now extended to next month. The U.N. reporting 5.5 million people, almost half the entire country's population, are in need of humanitarian aid. Years of political violence came to a boiling point last weekend when gangs attacked the capital, Port-au-Prince, and set free thousands of violent criminals from the prisons. Haiti's Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, still in Puerto Rico, forced to land there. As calls for his resignation now growing louder, Haiti's main airports shut down, leaving Haitians stranded. It's been bad before. This this is probably the worst. We I think we are, we are reaching um, peak crisis. Mercy Corps has been working to reduce violence in Haiti since 2019. The situation in Haiti is is delicate, and um, you know it is important to make. Uh, the right decisions moving forward. And I'm sure the U.S. government, just like all governments, do not want to make the situation worse. And Marissa, we've learned that leaders of Caribbean nations are calling an emergency meeting on this issue tomorrow. Correct. Uh, Peter, they're meeting tomorrow morning to discuss what they call a dire situation, hoping to decide on a resolution to bring stability and relief to Haiti, but stressing time isn't on their side. Peter. Marissa Parr with the very latest for us. Marissa, thank you. We're learning more about that helicopter crash that killed three people near the southern border. The National Guard identified two Army National Guard soldiers who were killed as 28-year-old Casey Frankowski and 30-year-old John Gracia, both from New York. The Department of Homeland Security also identified the Border Patrol agent who was killed as Chris Luna. A fourth person survived but was badly injured and has been identified as a New York Army National Guard soldier. That crash is still under investigation. Now back here in the U.S., where President Biden is set to accelerate his campaign push this week after his State of the Union address. And in the next couple of days, his likely Republican opponent, former President Trump, could take a big step toward clinching the Republican nomination. Ali Rafa has more. Hello, legend. President Joe Biden's campaign for re-election now in full swing. I like campaigning because it's the only time I get out of the cloister of the White House where I get to look people in the eye. The president set to travel this week to New Hampshire, Wisconsin, and Michigan, where more than 100,000 people voted uncommitted in the state's primary last month, much of them in protest to his handling of the Israel-Hamas war. It's understandable they feel that way, and that's why I'm doing everything I can to try to stop it. Biden hoping his growing ground game can chip away at former President Trump's favorability. The pair holding dueling rallies in battleground Georgia this weekend. The road to the White House leads straight through Georgia. Setting the stage for one of several primaries on Tuesday that could deliver both candidates their party's nominations. Mr. Trump, who lost the peach state to his 2020 rival by less than 12,000 votes. There has never been the spirit that I've seen this time. Twice. Vowing history won't repeat itself. The curtain closes on Crooked Joe's corrupt reign and the sun rises on a brand new day for Georgia and for America. With Trump's last GOP rival, Nikki Haley, now out of the race, Republicans now rallying around the former president to help him secure a second term. I'm not worried about those Trump destroying democracy. Though, those, I'm worried about Joe Biden were, destroying the world. And, Ali, there's renewed focus on Georgia after police say Lakin Riley, a nursing student there, was murdered by a migrant who crossed into the U.S. illegally last month. That's right. Trump met with Riley's family last night and once again blamed her death on President Biden's border policies. Senator Warnock today accusing Republicans of trying to score cheap political points. Peter. Ali Rafa with the very latest. Ali, thank you to the Middle East now, where a U.S. Army ship is en route to Gaza from Virginia. Its crew's mission to build a floating pier to provide humanitarian aid to desperate Palestinians. Another aid ship, this one Spanish, is also heading there from Cyprus. On the crisis itself, President Biden just delivered his strongest criticism yet of Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, telling MSNBC he is hurting Israel more than he's helping it. The president had hoped to 
secure a ceasefire before Ramadan, which begins tonight for many Muslims in the region and around the world. Well, still ahead tonight on NBC News exclusive, a rare look at the West's new battlefront with Russia in the Arctic. Plus, new questions late tonight about a photo release of Princess Kate that some big news organizations say may have been manipulated. We are back with new questions about Princess Kate after major news agencies, specifically the Associated Press and Reuters, pulled a photo released today by Kensington Palace over concerns that it may have been manipulated. The photo, which we are not showing here, claimed to show Kate with her children. But the AP says there is an inconsistency in the alignment of Princess Charlotte's left hand. It was said to be the first official photo of Princess Kate since the palace says she had abdominal surgery. The palace said the shot had been taken earlier this year. This week by her husband, Prince William. Now to an NBC News exclusive and a rare look at U.S. Marines training in the Arctic. It is a major test of NATO's military capabilities in the region as tensions grow between Russia and the West. Josh Letterman reports tonight near Russia's Arctic border. Tonight, the frosty Arctic is the new battleground in a growing military competition between Russia and the West. The U.S. Marines and a dozen allies joining forces for war games in northern Norway as part of the largest NATO exercises since the Cold War. U.S. and NATO troops are practicing storming a beach from the sea and the air as they work to defend NATO territory from any threat. I'll go ahead and continue maintaining airway and I'll grab a leg. In this mass casualty drill, languages blend together as American and Norwegian troops work shoulder to shoulder. These war games taking place not far from Russia's border, on NATO's northern front line. As global warming melts sea ice, the U.S., Russia, and China are all seeking to expand their Arctic foothold. For the Marines, it's a sharp shift after decades fighting in the hot, dry climates of the Middle East. After a rocky journey through the mountains, we reach Marines dug in on the mountainside. At night, the temperatures can drop below zero. We had Marines who had never been in the snow before coming to Norway. The scenario, repelling an invasion by a major hostile power from the east. You see in multiple vehicles. Out there. And Moscow is watching. Norwegian officials tell NBC News they've detected Russian vessels nearby spying on the exercises. Is it easier for an adversary to hide in snowy forests than it is, for example, in a desert? I'd say it depends on the conditions. You're here on a day like this, their snow tracks would be left. But if it was a snowstorm, those snow tracks would rapidly be, be closed. These Marines have spent nearly two weeks here, sleeping up to six to a tent, boiling snow for water, even praying in the snow. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Lance Corporal Cooper Corey from Massachusetts joined the Marines a year ago. I was my first time touching a ski pole was here. I fell in love skiing. How'd it go? Oh, I fell a lot. But, you know, I had fun. Biggest smile on my face. Tonight, a forceful message from the U.S. and its allies. Anywhere we go, I know we can fight. I know we can thrive. Josh Letterman, NBC News, Finnmark, Norway. We are back in a moment with a closer look at why car costs are skyrocketing nationwide. We are back now with a consumer alert about the cost of owning a car. It is the second biggest expense for most people after your mortgage or your rent. And now the cost of everything about owning a car is driving in the wrong direction. Christine Romans explains why. At SNS Automotive in Secaucus, New Jersey, owner Keith Scaglione is working hard to keep prices low for his loyal customers. And it hasn't been easy. To do something like this a few years ago, would it have cost the same or cost less? No, it's definitely costing more. Right. Um, that's a sensor like that now is probably at least 10% more than it was two years ago. Keith used to adjust his prices once a year. <laughs> now it's every three to six months. That's because the total annual cost of simply owning and maintaining a new car climbed to more than $12,000 last year, up from about 11000 the year before. And that doesn't even include monthly car payments, which spiked along with rising interest rates. Heather Trumpke is a mother of six in Atlanta who sold her SUV. You loved your SUV. Why did you sell it? 
the cost just got out of control and the maintenance, the day to day, week to week, month to month. And it was just heartbreaking. Her insurance alone rose more than $100 a month. Car insurance up more than 20% nationwide last year as insurers pay out for pricier claims. You have a high number of claims for all kinds of reasons, including that people aren't driving very well broadly. The data bears that out. And you have climate events that are essentially totaling cars. Back in Keith's repair shop, this business is more than just a job. Keith's uncle started it back in 1969, and it has been serving this community ever since. But a lot has changed. These are not your grandparents' cars. Now they're full of pricey sensors and cameras. This truck probably has at least 60 computers in it. 60 computers in one piece of machinery. Yes. And those parts, more expensive to repair. But longtime customers like Alan Bonin say they'll keep coming back. Oil price goes up, labor yeah. costs have gone up. Yeah. And you pay the price. Christine Romans, NBC News, Secaucus, New Jersey. And when we come back tonight, there is good news about the unlikely bond between these hockey players and their love of the ice. Finally, there is good news tonight about the power of teamwork to bring generations together. And as Boyd Hoopert from our Minneapolis affiliate Care TV shows us, sports can also help break the ice. All right, ready? There you go. Alone is not the best way we got one. to play hockey. That's a hit. But when Dad's not around, it is Matt Jenkins. I got him. Default. Nonstop. Denise and Morgan. That's daily. Say hockey is everything to their son. How much do I like hockey? 100%, dude. Matt is unique. When he was born, there was some hintings there. There was a genetic marker that was missing in his uh, chromosomes. Developmentally delayed. That's all they can tell us. Delayed. Yeah and delightful. Don't do this at home. Got him. Matt liked his high school years. Game on. And three more spent after graduation in his school district's transition program. After that, here you go. Missing his friends and structure, Matt found solace alone at the ice arena, where he also found mud mud ducks. them. The mud ducks. A group of men in their 60s and 70s. It's our coffee clutch. <laughs> they said, you know, if you want to come at 9 o'clock when we start, you can skate with us. Which is how 74-year-old Don Dreamin yeah. and 74-year-old Tom Watt right. yeah. ended up skating daily it, man. with 21-year-old Matt. Nice shot. Don's a good teammate. Huh? You're a good teammate. Oh, thank you, sir. They're his team. Yeah, where it all begins. The team that thought Matt needed better gear then bought it for him. Get those pads on. Including a jersey like theirs. He sets his alarm every day. My duck's on it. Sitting at the front door waiting. That looks good. Just when Matt needed new friends. You look like one of us. He is. He found them. Hey. Three times his age. They are everything to him. He comes home and he talks about them. So-and-so wasn't here today. They think he's sick. I hope he's okay. Tom. The mud ducks don't play games. They just play, enjoying hockey Attaboy. and each other. Oh, yeah. It's been a blessing for everybody. When Steve Burnham Arthur. saw how Matt was thriving, Woo. he started bringing his own son, Will, who has autism. Hey, look at that Will going. Now learning to skate and getting encouragement from Matt. We're doing good, Will. What do you say? They, they let him be who he is, and they are oh. inclusive. Bye, Polly. And when we leave, he gives, gives us a hug. There Thanks, you go. Steve. Means a lot. Wisdom born of age. This is life, isn't it? And right. friends. Two, three. Born of a flock. Yeah, he's a mud duck. Boyd Hoopert, NBC News, Cottage Grove, Minnesota. How much do you love Matt and the mud ducks? That's NBC Nightly News for this Sunday. I'm Peter Alexander. For all of us here at NBC News, we hope you have a great night. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.